Ja, wat, wat, wat was dat uh, precies? Wel, eh... Uh... <laughs> Excuseer. Wel, ik had dus enorm veel last van uh, keelontstekingen. Mm -hmm. En dat had blijkbaar te maken met mijn amandelen. Met uw amandelen? En mijn dokter heeft mij dus aangeraden mm -hmm. om een operatie te laten gebeuren. En met dit als gevolg... Excuseer. Waarom? Ongeloof is eigenlijk het, het juiste woord dat rijken hier hanteert. Ja, dat, dat, dat was bij mij dus ook mijn, mijn eerste gewaarwording. Dat ik dacht, dat, dat kan niet. Dat, dat, uh, dat mag niet. Dat... Als je met seks omgaat, is het, is het niet alleen het fysieke dat telt, maar ook soms de, de lieve woordjes. Ja. Alright everyone, welcome back and it's time to go balls deep. Now obviously that was a meme and you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself if memes hurt your feelings because as I said before, my perspective on Boruto has changed. But before I explain everything, I'm gonna give you guys 6 seconds to guess what you think I thought of this episode. Comment it below right now. Yeah, some of you may be surprised. I am myself. Maybe I was in a good mood today because I just didn't care to look at everything balls deep style. Like obviously this episode had its flaws but overall it was still a decent watch to me. Some fans will say to me that I have watched Boruto for so long and I have been disappointed so many times that maybe my standards have dropped. But to be perfectly honest with you, I think I am just happy that this arc is consistent. Boruto's problem is consistency. For example, one of the biggest complaints overall about the anime, which everyone can agree on, is the power scaling. Even this episode had this problem. The writers of Boruto always nerf or buff certain characters for plot convenience. The reason for this is obvious, right? There is no source material for the anime, it has 8 different writers on top of that. So this means everyone has their own perception of the characters and may not know everything that has happened so far. This creates a disconnect between the fans and what we are seeing, because the lore that we have been taught from the original Naruto does not get respected at times and we have to look past it for Boruto to make sense. Anyways, at this point, I'm watching Boruto for the story. We know the fights are always awesome with good choreography. I mean, even today it had great animation. I want to see Boruto's prophecy come true and why does Kawaki betray him in the future? The episode starts off with a solid first 6 minutes. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I liked it a lot in fact. And towards the end, I couldn't help but make some memes because, you know, this shit made me laugh my ass off. So here's the memes. So basically, um, what I was thinking of was... Um... Oh, f I can't believe you've done this. Hey, is this your knife, bitch? Yeah, Charles, I'll beat the shit out of you. Bitch, your weapons cannot harm me. Don't you know who the fuck I am? I'm the juggernaut. Hey, hey. Oh, yes, motherfucker, mama, I forget. Your mama does it, you your ass. Beat Charles. Shut the fuck up, Charles. Yeah, I'm gonna you beat you your ass. ass. <laughs> <laughs> Too fast. You better run, Charles. Get that shit out of my face, bitch. Don't you know who the fuck I am? Yo fam, run me some likes for them memes though. These kids out here are getting wrecked and I find it really hard to believe Sumire was out cold for two days for the plot to make sense though. I mean come on man, I'm a Boruto fan, I don't I know this can't be true. How did this even happen? She must be starving mate. The reason I like the first 6 minutes is because it has a lot of foreshadowing for Boruto's character development and it was progressing the story of the arc. I like the fact that Boruto has a destiny that would take everything from him. Now as I stated in my discussion video beforehand, I relate with Boruto a lot. In fact, I'd say my personality matches with his completely and in the past 3 weeks, the whole concept of everything being a new generation with different problems, I must say I'm starting to like him. I mean, why wouldn't I want a friend like Boruto in real life, who's a ride or die type of guy who's really cool and talented at the same time? On top of that, he's really goofy and funny. Personally, I feel as though the writing was fine in the start because it's exploring the concept of predestination. And as I stated beforehand, the anime was not doing this enough and viewers forgot the whole concept existed. Basically, Boruto sees a goose that cannot fly. This is because it has been domesticated by the villagers and over the generation it has lost the ability to fly compared to other birds. 
The bird expert explains that goose cannot fly because they do not migrate anymore and their predestination of genetics. So Boruto responds by saying this that he still wants to see the bird fly. And I love this response. This is because it's a reminder of the concept that reflects upon all of us watching the anime. Some of us feel as though we're birds stuck in a cage or birds without wings in real life. That's a saying that we all know, right? We do not pursue our dreams or goals due to the limitations and predestined character that puts our life the way it is. We do not choose our parents for example, we are products of our environment. So when Boruto says he still wants to see the bird fly, he's saying that he is a dreamer, he still wants to make a change for the greater good. So this is basically good writing because in the future Boruto vs Kawaki, we see Kawaki state that the age of shinobi is over. But clearly due to Boruto's character development, Boruto states no, I am still a shinobi. This means that Boruto learns over time that although he has a destiny he cannot escape and prove wrong, some things in the world just happen to be unfair but he wants to make a change, just like his younger self does now in this very episode. Not all human beings are born equal even in the Naruto universe. Every single one of us that watch Naruto and Boruto, we know that genetics do play a part in how great you can be. This is because they are clans. Like, if you were born an Uchiha, you're automatically given great eyes that no one else can possess. Boruto says to Jugo that if everything is based on genetics, that is no fun at all, doesn't it depend on how hard you try or not? So although I do myself agree with Boruto's idealism and agree with it, the cruel truth in real life and even in Naruto is, is not is, that's just not how things work. If you're born short for example, you're 100% going to have a more difficult time than a taller person to become an NBA player. So Jugo explains to Boruto what all of us are thinking as fans, that sometimes efforts alone cannot accomplish everything some paths are predestined like his own. Jugo is from a clan that makes him transform and he cannot control it. No one else has Sage transformation ability that he suffers from. Therefore, Jugo lives a harder life than most. <laughs> it was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Oh hell no! Anywho, that was kind of balls deep, but that's why I liked the writing and it was fantastic. However, unfortunately, after all of that, we get three minutes of filler. Like the plot pads the episode and repeats literally the same thing over and over and over again. So this caused a lot of pacing issues to, to a surprisingly very good start. It made things very boring. So the village ends up finding out that Jugo was behind the attacks and the land of rivers who are creating these biological weapons, you know, they created this whole plan just so that they can take Jugo and do some research on him and they frame Boruto. So Boruto's decision from beforehand to help Jugo instead of telling the truth makes everything hit harder because now no one trusts him, right? So Boruto is someone that thinks on feelings a lot and headstrong on caring about other people involved in the mission. He's always been like that. So therefore he acts upon his feelings when he makes decisions, right? This makes sense. So framing Boruto for doing the right thing will make him learn his lesson and make him think twice in the future if he should do that again for someone else. So there is an opportunity here for some character development which I would like to see myself. Anyways, on Twitter I asked you guys how was Boruto episode 100 and surprisingly with 388 votes, again this is a small sample of people, 43% said it's good, oh shit I just burped, sorry guys, 40% said average, 17% said absolute trash, so it was quite surprising to me, I do understand why people are saying it's average because of pacing issues, let's see what people have to say, Matthew said it was good, Harrison Senpai says it was good, by the time the episode ended I kind of hoped we got in a bit more. Yeah, I think we all felt the same way, mate. Let me give that a like. Vajulsa Beresha, the, uh, the homie of mine, she says that the fighting scenes were great. She gives a clap and these green-haired siblings turned into Pokemon. Uh, Heather says this arc is pretty damn good so far. I agree with that. Crollo says it started slow but overall it was good so I guess this guy agrees with my opinion. Eternal Strike Gamer says it was average, this episode gets a solid 7 out of 10, it's starting to get a bit too repetitive with Jugo saying don't come near me and bro and the gang running to Jugo, that's so true. Leslie says they should have started the episode of Team 15's fight. I, I, this is a good point. This is a very good point by Leslie. I was thinking the whole time the same thing during, while I was watching the episode. The editing should have switched places. They should have put the fight in the beginning. This would have put in, uh, made the pacing a bit better and less boring. 100% agree with that. Anyway, guys, make sure to follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Interact with us. Make sure to smash that like button. Join me on Tuesday and Thursday because we got new uploads on those days. And I'll see you guys next time.